In today's video, I want to compare the training speed of a very simple artificial neural network implemented in assembly language with uh, the same neural network implemented using PyTorch line. So, first of all, uh, I want to say that this video is not intended against PyTorch lining. Uh, quite the contrary, I'm using PyTorch lining and I found it uh, to be always very useful and helpful and uh, you can really do stuff with uh, PyTorch line. But uh, I'm just curious to see uh, how much speed uh, can be gained by uh, implementing a simple neural network in assembly language compared to just using a complete uh, framework with uh, lots of features. And, well, we'll just have to see. So I have on the left side here my assembly language implementation. Uh, I've made a number of videos covering the development. And uh, if you haven't watched them, maybe you should watch them after this video. So what I have here is a very simple uh, neural network. It uh, just uses uh, two artificial neurons uh, and it uh, tries to learn the OR uh, function. And um, if you remember here at the end, I just have the input data, which is um, the values for the OR function, zero or zero is uh, zero. Uh, for the output, uh, I have two values here, one that indicates uh, there should be a zero and one that indicates there should be a one. So uh, for the rest of the values, zero or one uh, is one, one or zero is one, one or one is one. So uh, something similar uh, will be uh, in Python. Uh, remember for my uh, assembly language implementation, the bias uh, was explicitly uh, given here and always set to 1. And this is something that in uh, PyTorch lining uh, you don't need to specify because it will automatically create biases. So let's take a look uh, here. Um, first of all, I should mention that uh, I'm using a rather standard approach. I have a data set, I have a model, and I have this file here that uh, does the training. So let's take a look at the data set. It's very simple. Uh, all the values are stored here. As you can see, they are similar to the ones in assembly language. I'm having uh, here the input values uh, without the explicitly defined uh, bias value, which will be managed internally by PyTorch lining. Uh, but uh, I also have here the output, so 0 or 0 is 0, and this corresponds to this 1 here. And for the rest of the values I have here, uh, the 1. And the rest is just uh, regular stuff for uh, accessing these values and returning the length of the data set. So now let's take a look at the model. Again, uh, very simple, uh, following uh, regular PyTorch lining implementation. So it's a model uh, extending uh, the lining module. Uh, I'm passing here a list of data loaders. I have a function here for accessing the train data loader. So it's just returned from here. Nothing happens here. Uh, then in the model, uh, I have a linear layer. So this uh, will allocate internally the weights matrix and the biases. Uh, there is also the activation function, which is uh, sigmoid. Uh, and this is the same function that I'm using in assembly language. For the loss function, uh, there is the MSE, uh, mean square error loss and this is the same function that I'm using in assembly language. I have here a uh, learning rate uh, and this uh, variable here that is used to uh, gather the loss uh, during training. And I have here the forward method, 
which uh, simply calls uh, the linear layer and the activation. And this is the same that happens in assembly language. Uh, then we have here the training step, which calls uh, forward and the loss. And uh, this gets appended here. And uh, on train epoch, and uh, the loss is computed and uh, displayed. As I said, uh, this is pretty much standard stuff for PyTorch line. And uh, I've defined here other methods, but uh, I'm not using them. So as you can see, uh, there is no implementation here. Uh, these should also not be called because I've uh, switched them uh, off, as you'll see shortly. And then uh, for optimizer, I've used stochastic gradient descent, uh, which pretty much corresponds to what I've implemented in assembly language. And I've given it uh, the model parameters and the learning rate. And uh, nothing else. Uh, with PyTorch Lightning, uh, you can do very fancy stuff, but I'm not doing anything here. So let's take a look at the training file. So what I'm doing here, I'm uh, instantiating the data set. I'm uh, wrapping it in the data loader. I'm specifying a batch size of one with number of workers one. This again corresponds to how I'm accessing the data in assembly language. Uh, I'm defining this uh, variable here, which is passed to the model. And this is how it will access this one. Uh, I could have just passed uh, the data loader itself. Uh, then I have the trainer. I'm defining uh, the number of epochs to be 1,000. Uh, there is no early stopping or anything, so uh, it will run for 1,000 epochs. I'm specifying the accelerator to be CPU uh, precision 32. Uh, this corresponds to 32 bits, uh, floating point numbers that I've used in assembly language. I'm uh, enabling the progress bar. This is anyway enabled by default. I don't want to run uh, sanity validation steps. Uh, I don't want to run validation. Uh, I want it to log the values uh, every one step. And uh, this corresponds again to what I'm doing in assembly language. I don't want checkpointing because I don't want the framework to do anything uh, in addition to what I'm doing in assembly language. And finally, I'm calling uh, trainer.fit. So with PyTorch Lightning, uh, you can call also test, validate, and so on. But uh, this requires implementing uh, the other methods in uh, the model files. I have not implemented them. I'm also not calling this one. That's it. So uh, as I said, it's pretty straightforward. So what I want to do now is um, train uh, the network and compare uh, the time it takes. I've actually already executed uh, the Python part. So as you can see, it created a PyCache folder here. So this time will not be taken into account. So I'm going to start with uh, my uh, assembly language, uh, neural network, and I'm actually going to run two tests. One test is just uh, executing this with the time command. Uh, and uh, the second test will be executing uh, with output redirected to a file. Uh, and uh, this is relevant because um, I'm accessing uh, this uh, virtual machine via SSH. So output actually goes over the network and to my screen terminal. So uh, I think that uh, it's going to have a difference if uh, the output is going directly to the console or it's redirected to a file. But we are going to see. Uh, also, before starting, uh, I want to show you that I have a virtual machine uh, with one single uh, CPU core. So. Uh, of course, my implementation assembly language is not parallel. And also, PyTorch Lightning uh, is not able to parallelize anything. So it's just one CPU core that's available. And no GPU, no 
other stuff. Okay, so with this being said, well, let's uh, start the first test. I'm going to type time uh, test INN and let's run it. And we see it took uh, one second uh, uh, point one four five, so roughly uh, one second, bit over one second, uh, and it displayed uh, all this information. And in the previous video, I've explained what's displaying here. It basically displays the loss after each step, the weights, the current input, expected output the actual output and the updated weights. But anyway, uh, we should keep in mind that it took roughly one second. So let's now test similarly uh, the Python implementation. I already have a virtual environment set up with uh, Python version 3.12. Uh, this is the C Python variant, so I'm say time python train dot by and let's see what happens and already uh, we can see that uh, it uh, took some time just to, in to initialize stuff uh, we see it displayed some information here that uh, there are no gpus available no tpu available and so on uh, it has six parameters to be uh, tuned and this corresponds to the four weights plus uh, the two biases. So it's the same number of parameters as we trained in assembly language. And here uh, on each step, it displays this progress bar with uh, information. So again, I would say this pretty much corresponds to the information being displayed from assembly language. And I think you can already tell that it's actually taking more than one second. So it's approaching 1000. I'm not reducing the time, so you can get a feeling of how much it takes. So let's see. Okay. And it says it's one minute, six seconds. So this is roughly 60 times uh, slower than the assembly language implementation. But anyway, let's uh, now try to do uh, the second test. And I'm going to uh, redirect the output to a file. Uh, let's call it, uh, I don't know, run.txt. And I'm just going to execute it. Wow. And this time it took 0 0.1 uh, seconds. So why? Well, because as I said, I'm connecting via SSH. So actually the console display functions are sending the messages, the console messages uh, to the SSH connection, and then it gets transferred uh, via network uh, to my terminal here. So this is why it took uh, more time. Uh, so, as you can see here, the actual run was 0 0.1 second. So, let's do something similar with uh, Python. So, again, time python train.py, and again, I'm going to redirect the output to run.txt. So, again, let's see what happens here. So, it loaded. The Python lining library uh, it displayed these messages and this got displayed here, and not uh, captured in the file uh, because it probably uses uh, standard error instead of standard output. But anyway, uh, the progress bar and all the information is no longer uh, displayed, so this gets captured in the run.txt file. So, as you can see, it uh, still uh, takes a lot of time. As previously, I'm not uh, compressing the time, the time uh, on the video. So, you can get an actual idea of uh, how long this takes. 
So let's see uh, if it will be uh, shorter or the same time. But uh, keep in mind uh, that uh, the assembly language took 0 0.1 seconds and this one took 1 minute and 3 seconds. So let's try to compute. So 1 minute and 3 seconds, that's uh, 63 seconds divided by uh, 0 0.113. So that's roughly uh, 557 times uh, faster the assembly language implementation compared to the framework-based implementation. Uh, also, let's take a look at the generated files. So run.txt generated by Python is uh, roughly one megabyte, while my run.txt generated from assembly language is uh, 1.5 megabytes. So uh, they are comparable in size, mine being larger. So there's obviously no difference here from uh, the amount of information displayed. So yeah, uh, the lining uh, implementation, as I said, it's a great library. I, strongly advise you to use it but still due to all the stuff that's happening there uh, all the objects encapsulation and so on uh, it was uh, during this test uh, five or over 500 times uh, slower than the pure assembly language implementation and i guess this was somewhat to be expected so yeah if uh, you are no longer uh, thinking about assembly language, maybe uh, you should uh, think about it a bit more. So I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, don't forget to like and subscribe to get notified when I release new videos. So thank you for watching. Bye.